Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing fine. When we think of generating insights, we think of different visualizations. One of my favorite visualizations is the Sankey diagram or the other name is alluvial diagram. So in this video, I'll show you how you can create your own Sankey diagram or alluvial diagram using Python and more specifically the Plotly library. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. I'll kickstart the activity by importing the necessary modules. So I'll require pandas as well as the go function from the plotly library. So I will say import plotly dot graph objects as go. So in this video, I'll show you how to generate the alluvial diagram plus I'll also show you how to read the alluvial diagram in order to generate insights. So for that, I'll first import a CSV file into a data frame DF. So the way I would do that is DF is equal to PD dot read CSV. And I'll import our very famous Titanic data set into this data frame DF. So I have the URL handy, which I'll paste here. So I'll quickly run the cell. So now I'll go forward and I'll show you the first five rows of the data frame. So you have these many columns, passenger ID, survive, P class and so on and so forth. Now what I'll do is I'll try to create a data frame structure with source and destination. So let me start the process. I'll go very slowly so that you have a hang of how to go about things. So let me start. Now the objective before I start writing code is to understand what you have to do in order to generate the alluvial diagram. Now the first thing is what you have to do is you have to start with a source. You have to have a destination and you can have multiple other variables in between. You want to have a flow diagram that tells you from the destination what is the contribution of the source. I want to figure out how many male passengers that were traveling in say P class 3 died. So if I want to understand this visually, then it is here that alluvial diagram comes into picture. So let me start. Let me start by creating our first temporary data frame. So I'll say df of temp1 is equal to df dot group by. Now inside the group by, what I have to pass in is the source that I want to actually understand the flow from. So let me say p class. So I want to understand the overall distribution in terms of classes and the second column or the middle column that I want for my alluvial diagram is basically gender. I want the overall count based on this group by so that is what I'll add here which is name dot count and I'll also call the reset index function to reset the index. The other thing that I'll also do is I'll also change the column names to source target and value. So this is the structure that I'm creating for my first temporary data frame. So this is how my temporary data frame looks like. Now if you see here the source values are numbers 1, 2 and 3. And you have target variables female, male, female, male. So rather than having one, two, I'll kind of quickly convert this into something that is p class one, p class two, and so on and so forth. So I will say df temp one is equal to df temp one dot source. So source is my column dot map. And I'll pass in a dictionary here. So I'll say one corresponds to p class 1, 2 corresponds to p class 2 and 3 corresponds to p class 3. So this is something that I want to do. And now I'll show you the data frame again. So now it's replaced the entire data frame with the column. 
the only mistake that I've done here is I've not used the column name. So I'll quickly change this to column name again. So df of temp1 of source is what I'll add here. So I'll again run these cells. I'll run this again. And now I'll have the correct data frame with me. So yes, this is what I have. So this is my starting part of the alluvial diagram. This is the middle part. And then I'll have the end part, which would be survived or not survived. Okay. So this is the flow of action. You can add multiple linkages in between and then join them together. So I'll, I'll not jump the gun quickly. I'll show you all of that in process. So now what I'll do next is I'll do the same activity. I'll have gender as the source now and survived or not survived as the target. So all I have to do is I have to change this to df of temp2. I'll have my source changed. And I'll say survived because that is a column that gives me how many people survived. And I'll change this. So this is what we have in terms of the second data frame. So your source is the gender, female, male, and how many people survived and how many people did not survive. So you have the breakage very clearly visible here. Now, the only thing that I don't like is zero one. So that is something that I'll again change. So I'll kind of create a mapping. So DF of target. So DF of df temp2 so i'll have to change this dot target again so i'll copy target here for one i'll say survived and for zero i'll say died so that is what we have here i'll now quickly run the cell and now if I look at df underscore temp2, this is what I have died, survived, died, survived. So I have two linkages ready. I just have to join them together. So I'll create a new data frame. So I'll say links is equal to pd dot concat. And I'll pass in df of temp1 comma df of temp2 and axis equal to zero because I want to join them row by row. So that is what we have. So that is what I've done here. So now I'll quickly show you the links. So yes, this is what we have. So you have source P class one to female, P class one to male. Then similarly, you have female to died and so on and so forth. So you have a clear distinction between source and destination in every row and how, what is the value corresponding to that source and destination? All of that is very clearly visible here. In order for you to use this data frame into Plotly or Python, you'll have to make some minor modifications, which is what I'll guide you through. So I'll quickly go down. So now what I want is, I want all the source and target variables to have numbers, which is what Plotly requires. So I want the unique values and I want to have a mapping for every unique value with respect to source and target. So that is what I'll do here. So I'll create a variable called as unique source and target. I'll say list after doing my set of research with respect to identifying unique values across columns. I came across this stack overflow solution. So PD dot unique. Then I pass in the data frame values. So links of source and target. So I say target here dot values dot travel and I pass in K. So it looks correct. So let me quickly run this. And now if I go to now, if I look at this particular variable that I've created, it would be a list and it contains all the unique values of source and target that are present in these two columns. So I've covered everything correctly. Now I also want a mapping with respect to each of the unique values. So the way I would do that is I'll create a dictionary. So I'll say mapping dict is equal to and I'll create a dictionary comprehension. 
so i'll say k comma v so that is so i'll say key comma value for every value and key in enumerate and then i pass in this particular list value so i'll pass in the values here now if i show you the mapping dictionary what i see right now is i have p class which is at index 0 has a value of 0 if you're kind of confused in terms of why i am doing this the simple answer to this is that i require this later on when i have to create a plotly chart so that is where you cannot directly pass in the data frame as is so you have to modify the data in such a way that plotly is able to use it effectively okay now what I'll do is I'll take this particular dictionary and I'll pass in the values here. So links of source is equal to links of source dot map and I pass in the mapping dictionary. Similarly for the destination column or the target column, I take this column name here and I pass it here. So now when I show you links, you will have values like 0, 1 for source and target. So that is what we have essentially. Now one small tweak before I actually show you the command in terms of creating the alluvial diagram or the Sankey diagram is I have to basically orient or I have to modify my data frame into a dictionary where every column name is the key and every value inside that column is basically a list. So that is something that I have to do. So I'll say links of dict is equal to links to dict and I'll say orient equal to list. So that is what I want. So now this is what I essentially wanted. My column name should be the key and the values inside the column should be the values inside the list. So that is what I have here. Now comes the actual part wherein I'll show you the alluvial diagram. So yes, we are almost there. So I'll create a variable fig for figure. I'll say go dot figure. So this is what we have here. I'll pass in data is equal to a list. So go dot sankey. Now go dot sankey is what I've defined. Now I say node is equal to dict again. So you require a dictionary. I'll add some amount of padding so that the output looks really clear. I'll add the thickness is equal to 20. I'll add some characteristics to the line. So I'll say line is equal to dict. Color is equal to black. And width is equal to 0.5. Label is equal to the unique labels that we've defined. So that is something that I'll catch hold from this place here. So this would be the labels in your actual alluvial diagram. I want the entire thing to be in blue. So I'll say color is equal to blue. So this is the first piece that I've already defined. Now I also have to define the link. So the node structure is defined. Now for every node, I've basically given the thickness, the line, the color, the labels and the other things that are there. The next thing that I have to now define is basically the linkages. So I have to say link is equal to again a dictionary source is equal to source or let me catch hold of this so link links dict and i pass in the source values similarly i'll have target and values so let me copy this let me say target comes in from here and value comes in from here so So we have the structure ready. So for every alluvial slash Sankey diagram, what you basically need is a node. 
you have to define the node characteristics and then you have to define the linkages as well here you have to supply the labels here you have to basically supply the values so that is what we have so let me click on run so it says there is an error called as thickness so i think uh, i've made a mistake in terms of the uh, naming so let me go back here so i think yes there is a spelling mistake so sorry yes so the cells executed properly now i have to show you the actual figure so i'll say fig dot update layout so i'll add a title to this so title text is equal to titanic survival alluvial diagram and i'll also add a font size equal to 10 so that is what we have and i'll say figure dot show so let me run this so here is what we have essentially so if you look at this particular chart i am able to clearly trace back from how many people died so if these are the total people that died and these are the total male passengers that were there in the uh, titanic so out of 102 people that died 86 were male and out of that 86 as well if you look at p e class 3 males all of them died so if you traverse from here to here all of them died for p e class 3 females that is 35 out of 35 16 died and the remaining survived so this is the power of alluvial diagram wherein you can generate so many insights just by looking at this plot so this is a big insight that all the male passengers traveling from p class 3 were not able to survive when titanic crashed so this is an insight generating visualization which is something that i wanted to show you today so the code is in such a way designed that it's basically a blueprint that you can utilize for your data frame you just have to keep appending rows so if you want one more level of uh, say segregation here with one more column you can add that as well the only thing that you'll have to do is you'll have to add one more temporary data frame join it together in this new links data frame and that's about it uh, rest everything remains the same and yeah you can start utilizing this code right away so well this is all that i had in today's video i hope you found this video informative if you do like the content that i post on my channel it would be super motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos on data science and machine learning Thank you so much for watching the video.